Republican racism and lying about it being racism continues. The Republicans are struggling right now to find the great white oath. Remember when that Kansas congresswoman claimed she didn't know the racist origins of that phrase? Last month, she supported a House resolution to pardon Jack Johnson. The resolution read in part, whereas the victory by Jack Johnson over Tommy Burns prompted a search for a white boxer who could beat Jack Johnson, a recruitment effort that was dubbed the search for the great white hope. Congresswoman, uh, Congresswoman, rather, who called for the great white hope and then claimed she did not know what the phrase really meant. Turns out she had recently supported a bill that explained what it meant. The California man who proudly declared himself a right-wing terrorist now says he meant to say extremist, and it's his fault, not that congressman's. And also in our third story in the countdown, secessionists in Texas holding a rally with a gubernatorial candidate saying they know it might mean a bloody war. Congresswoman Lynn Jenkins, first the Kansas lawmaker, you will recall, let this one fly at a recent town hall meeting. Republicans are struggling right now to find the great white hope. Um, I, I suggest to any of you that are concerned about that, that are Republicans, there are some great young Republican minds in Washington. She then rattled off four examples of great white Republican hopes, and in her subsequent pseudo-apology, she said, she said that she did not know what, the, uh, what great white hope meant or that it held negative connotations. Turns out that less than a month earlier, she had supported a House resolution calling on President Obama to pardon posthumously the first African-American heavyweight boxing champ, Jack Johnson, for bogus and racist convictions under the Mann Act. The resolution read in part, whereas the victory by Jack Johnson over Tommy Burns prompted a search for a white boxer who could beat Jack Johnson, a recruitment effort that was dubbed the search for the great white hope. Jenkins' new excuse, quoting her spokeswoman, no, she did not read the specific resolution. You may also recall Congressman Wally Herger of California's 2nd District and his response to this man. And I want to say that I'm a proud right-wing terrorist. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. There's a great American. The so-called great American Bert Stead now says, quote, I meant to say extremist. I was defending my right to be extreme, but not in the same sense as going out and doing violence. I think Wally heard extremist. My mistake has caused Wally a lot of trouble. And more noise in Texas, where a pro-secession rally in Austin last Friday drew, wow, almost 205 people. It included a reference to a bloody war and a Republican candidate for governor named Deborah Medina. Flag is coming down from over Texas. It will not be part of Texas anymore. I have no clue about the legality of it. All I do know is that's what we as Texans need. Secession is the answer. We are Thank aware you. that stepping off into secession may in fact be a bloody war. Count on the far right to screw it up somehow. O L I G A R H. One letter is missing. Oligarch. Quite the one that's missing is why. Wait, it gets worse. Walk softly and carry a big stick. Speak. Speak softly. Theodore Roosevelt said speak softly and ca Oh, never mind. The danger of today's version of the mythical homespun aw shucks TV totalitarian Lonesome Roads Glenn Beck is summed up by remarks today in which he claimed that a revolution has begun in this country, a stealing of America in the guise of an election, and his repeated insistence that the president's, president is a Marxist. Our number one story in the countdown, the comfort of today's mythical homespun aw shucks TV totalitarian Lonesome Roads Glenn Beck is that every day he gives away the essential truth that he is an idiot. If you're going to warn the colonists that the English have arrived in the bay, you're not going to get very far by jumping onto a horse and yelling, the brutish are coming, the brutish are coming. If you're trying to tell Mr. Chambers that the alien book to serve man is not about helping people but eating them, you kind of lose your credibility if you say, Mr. Chambers, don't get on that ship. The rest of the book to serve man, it's a phone book. Here's Mr. Beck last week with the zeal of Paul Revere and the panic of Mr. Chambers' assistant cryptographer, Pat, and the spelling ability of a third grader. I told you that we were going to we were going to talk about these things. We we're going to talk about Obama, the left, internationalists, graft, acorn style organizations, revolution and hidden agenda. O L I G A R H one letter is missing. Why did I select these words? Because acorn selects 
tides. They all select their, their, their words first and then tie them all together into one word. Oligarch, the, quest, the one that's missing is why. I don't know if we're turning into an oligarchy or what we're turning into, but unless you ask why, we're going to transform into something. Ask questions. Uh, I got a question. Don't you rehearse oligarchy? Or did Obama steal the letter C? Mr. Beck came back the next day and tried to bury the reality that the less than 1% of the country that watches or listens to his show thinking they are not listening to an uneducated, imperceptive, panicky whack job are completely mistaken. Channeling his inner Pee Wee Herman, he said everything but I meant to do that and suggested he almost left out the C in oligarchy on purpose, that the C stands for czars. This was desperation at its worst. The fascination with czars is a fodder for a segment of its own. The use of the Russian dictatorial term czar for a presidential appointee did not just begin yesterday. It began with President Nixon when he put in an energy czar. William Simon, during the oil crisis of December 1973, Simon promptly announced we'd be starting daylight savings not in April but in January. That's a czar. And the true era of American czars came under, gosh, Ronald Reagan. He created the position of drug czar, filled more or less continuously since 1982. So, Mr. Beck, if you're going to insult czars and the sainted memories of President Nixon and President Reagan, I'm going to have to challenge you to a duel. That's D-U-E-L, by the way. It's hard to say what percentage of that less than 1% watches in rapt, mesmerized fascination at the truth teller whose low brain function is no lower than their own, and what percentage watches, as the rest of us do, for the never unfulfilled promise of a train wreck yet to come. He misquoted Shakespeare the other day. To me, train wreck. To his gullible viewers, golly, he knowed about Shakey's Pizza. I mean, look, he quotes Theodore Roosevelt. Yeah, the, the guy who looks like the mountain. We speak without fear while basing it all in fact. Walk softly and carry a big stick. That ain't a gun, man. That is the facts. Yes, it is. Walk softly and carry a big stick. Uh, speak softly and carry a big stick. Whatever. That is the facts. One other thing here. College communications programs don't teach you much about actual broadcasting, but I had one professor whose full-time job was as general manager of one of the local radio stations. And among many things, he taught me one truth that he said separated the men from the boys. I hate those egotistical good morning world sign-ons, Darn Martin said to me. People watch and listen to radio and TV one person at a time. Talk to one person at a time. Whenever I hear good evening, everyone, I turn around to see who comes in the room with me when they say that. Ahem. Well, hello, America. Good night, America. And don't forget, squawk softly, carry a big brick, and leave off the last C for savers. The persons in the world, the Bronx, Betsy McCoy, the shameless, factless health industry shill, back on CNBC, allowed to again spew the stuff she made up, or more likely that was handed to her by her pharma overlords, claiming pages 16 and 17 of the reform bill, quote, will force everyone under the age of 65 to buy the same one-size-fits-all government plan. Except it doesn't say that. It describes how you can keep your current insurance if you like it for some reason. When a pro-reform advocate repudiated McCoy's lie, the interview was suddenly tapped by the host. But the real question is, why is she still allowed on TV when her shilldom is so well known that even one of her own health care employers fired her from its board in embarrassment? She's a paid employee. The runner-up columnist, singer Pat Boone, describes seeing cancer fighting cells he saw under a microscope once as a bunch of little orphan Annie eyes, perfectly round, clear circles. Described the cancer cells he saw as, quote, little black iridescent globs, almost radiant from within, pulsing with menace, looking like miniaturized Darth Vader's from Star Wars. Then he concluded, I then asked the obvious question, do we know how cancer starts, where the black, filthy cells come from? He then compared the miniaturized Darth Vader's, the black iridescent globs, the black filthy cells to a political virus and concluded, quote, I call it liberalism. And when there's an African-American president, Pat, the rest of us call those filthy black references racism. But our winner, Michael Scheuer, ex-CIA staffer, back with another remark about a terrorist attack here, which if uttered by a liberal, uh, would be the subject of diatribes on every fixed news show and every right-wing radio hate cast all day long. Oh, sure, we're going to be attacked. Rahm Emanuel wants an attack. He loves crisis, and crisis, the Democrats, he says, can get all their programs through. These people simply do not care. For the first time, I think a sitting president is giving aid and comfort to the enemy, both psychologically and materially. The president obviously does not care. This is the same lunatic who last month said, without anybody 
as much as reproaching him. The only chance we have as a country right now is for Osama bin Laden to deploy and detonate a major weapon in the United States. Mr. Scheuer, you do realize that it is now self-evident you are rooting for terrorism to take place in this country and thus rooting for the terrorists. Former CIA bin Laden station chief and evidently former American Michael Scheuer, today's worst person in the world.